hello guys and uh, welcome to the fourth video i think in this lagum tutorial series i am alfred samanga and today we are going to be talking about microservice in the communication in lagum and we'll be talking in particular about uh, dependency injection and how you can call one microservice from another uh, in lagum uh, so just as a recap in the last video we set up our microservices environment and if you have followed through that video you should have ended up with a build system that is one microservice the product service today we are going to add the user service uh, and see how we can make these services communicate the product service and the user service that we are going to add so okay let's get to it so what we need basically we need a second microservice so we are going to copy this okay so if we copy this we then rename to user because we need a user service this is how easy it is to create a new microservice so user and then there is oh, this microservice is going to manage our user login logout and stuff like that okay so every microservice that you list here you also have to declare it here at the top this is where you declare the microservices that are in your project so we are going to do this and then do that okay copy paste and then that's the user API, user implementation. Okay, and then we we refresh, import changes. Okay, so we just wait for it while it does that. Okay, guys, so it's done. Mm, as you can see, we have our two, we have our two project here for that new microservice just we, that we just added so what we are going to do now is we are going to just set up this microservice the same way we did the product api in the previous video uh, if you guys haven't watched that video i recommend you watch it because we are building upon that content okay so anyway new directory name of the directory source main java we follow the Maven style in Lagoon for for directory structures and then same story here new directory And then uh, here, since I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy the classes that we did. So I'm going to copy the product service and paste it here in the user API. So paste it there and then rename. So product service, now we are doing a user service. Okay. All right. So there we are, it was called user service, product service, now we are renaming it to user products. This becomes users. Let's just check our imports. They are okay, okay, that's it. Next, we copy the implementation. So copy this and then we come here and we paste it right here. And then we rename from product user okay and then we extend the user service like that and then we fix our imports we need to remove this thing okay then it's retaining product services up we're going to say user services up okay so we're done with this one we copied the module we paste it here in the user implementation okay so there we go and the user service module okay we also need to change we are now binding the user service which we just created uh, so it's this one with the user service implementation user service 
implementation like that okay and we fix our imports <coughs> okay cool next we copy the resources directory just take it as it is copy it and paste it in main so we are going to say main and then paste Okay, and then we paste it here. And then what we do, we change application.conf to as ref referencing the product service. We're going to change this to user and then product service module. We're going to change this to user service module. Okay, that's it in the application.conf. No need to change the logbag.xml. Mm, logback SML. this is just a configuration for logging we are using uh, log for j so this is where you configure how the logging should be done okay okay we'll talk about it later on right so what's left the test class so we're going to copy this and also paste it in the in test package here and we also rename it from product to user okay and then i'm going to change we're now testing the user service uh, the user service and then same story here the user service like that okay cool and it should say user service should be up all right and then we fix our imports right so yes our microservice is done let's just test it user service test run user service test and then we wait for okay that's it so our test is passed it means we have done uh, the user service correctly all right so now we have our two microservices how do we make them communicate this is where uh, we need to do something again we start in the build with sbt this is where we configure how all our microservices depend on each other is like we need right now so we need to be able to call the user a service from the product service what you do is you need to reference the user api from the calling microservice in our case is the product implementation so what we are going to do we are going to take this here and we copy it and we come here we say product service implementation depends on also on the user api like that and then yeah, right that's it in build this bt we refresh okay so our refreshing is done next thing we have told lagum that the product implementation depends on user api what we now need to do is go to the product service module which is the calling microservice we are going to bind client here so this is important you need to bind the client the client we are going to use is the user service client if you remember in the last video we spoke about how Lagom uses your API, the, the, the service descriptor, to build a client that you can use to invoke methods in another microservice. So what you're doing here is to bind that client, to say we need a client for this user service because we need to make calls to the service. So you come in product service module and then you bind client here. Right under bind service you do this. Okay, so we're done with the product service module. Next off, we need to expose a call to that. So we go in the product service API. We're just going to copy paste this. And then we're going to call this test user service call like that. And then we do the same. We duplicate this one and we update the rest endpoint. So this will be test user service call like that and then the endpoint will be handled by this method just need a comma there 
okay that's it and then we need to implement this method so we need we can do a shortcut out ender and then it asks us to implement the method test and then you just say confirm ender and then it will put a method for you here okay guys uh, there are several ways of doing this we can actually type manual if you want to or you can just hit control o which is control override and you hit end it's the same way it has it produces the same result which is override the method in your super class okay so here our request object we can just name it not used we are not taking any request data all right so what we are going to do now we say we are going to log uh, product uh, service about to call the user service <laughs> like that <clears throat> and then what we do is we actually call the service but now we do not have a reference to that service so how do you get a reference to the user service symbol you come here you declare private right now uh, user service uh, user service like that uh, we need to import this class so you can just hit out enter and then import class okay we have that we need to insert a constructor so out insert constructor and then you get that one all right fine but now as it is uh, you won't be able to get a user service because we are not the one who is going to create this class so you cannot say new product service and then pass a user reference what we are going to do is we are going to take advantage of lagom dependence injection so we are going to annotate this constructor with 8 inject this is important in order for you to be able to get the user service okay so now lagom is going to inject a user service for us we are going to set this reference in our in our member variable here okay so now we have a reference to the user service class we can what we can do is return user service dot test we are calling the test method dot invoke dot then apply remember lagom is asynchronous so we are saying we, with then apply what we are doing is invoke this method then wait for the result so then apply uh, on the result uh, what we are going to do is we are going to say log.info uh, user service uh, responded to the call from the product service like that okay and then what we simply do is we return the result s and that's it our implementation is done okay so here uh it returns a completion a completion stage or a completable future uh, so on that you have methods such as then accept then apply then compose we'll talk about those later on in other tutorial uh, tutorial videos okay so that's fine our implementation for this method is done what we are now going to do we're going to run this project and see if we can uh, since we modified our build we're just going to refresh this So let's clear up a bit and then we say SBT run all and wait for them. Okay, so our system is finished running. We're going to head over to the browser and then we're just going to test it. So we'll say localhost and then we need to copy this endpoint we just added. This is what we are going to call. Okay, so copy that like that. okay so user service is up okay so what happened here let's just go through it again uh we 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 added an endpoint inside the api right which is what we call this api endpoint is exposing this implementation so we came here and we logged product service about to call the user service so if you check in our terminal that's what happened we logged from product service implementation this log product service about to call the user service and then we made the actual call and then after some time uh, the user service responded right 
and then uh, we you logged user service and responded to the call from the product service it's now this log then after this we retained that response to the caller of this end of this method right here which was our our rest endpoint that's how we ended up with this result in the browser okay right so that's it that's how you call another microservice from another microservice in lago okay so as a recap what we just did in this video we went into build.sbt we configured our second microservice which is this uh, we told Lagoon that product service this one uh, depends on the user api okay and then we went on to the module in the product service module we bound a client so we said bind the client user service to tell Lagoon to give us a client that we can use to call the user service okay and then we moved on to the api we added an endpoint that we can call to test this and then we went on to implement this method in the user service where we added a member variable for the user service we injected a reference to that service using the java the lago dependency injection framework lago uses juice for dependency injection okay and then we were able we were finally able to call a method on the user service from within the product service and then we logged the response we returned the response okay anyway that's it for today guys i hope you guys found the information in this video useful if you did please like the video if you need any clarity please drop a comment in the comment section subscribe for more videos like this one in the next video, we'll be talking about database connectivity. We'll see how we can connect to a database uh, in Lago. Uh, I think we'll be using Postgres for this. So you guys stick around, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.